In my last video on invasions, I received a lot of feedback and commentary from the community. Today, I want to take the opportunity to focus on a common assumption between invaders and the invaded, that the other side has the advantage. When we talk about invasions in Elden Ring, we are talking about a very specific type of PvP, one where an invader can enter a host session and fundamentally change the scope of the level. The invader is loosely allied with the enemies of the level, and the host will have their summoned phantoms to assist them. So who, in that scenario, has the advantage? Let's consider the basics. The host is, by default, ineligible for invasion. This is due to Elden Ring removing solo host invasions, making the feature entirely opt-in. A host must be online and deliberately choose to engage with another multiplayer system to become eligible for invasion. This is an advantage. Being able to determine where and how you open yourself to attack is a classic element of warfare and personal security. When I stay in my home, hiding in the deepest recesses of my basement, I avoid many of the outside dangers, but I also give up my ability to profit from such exploits. Regardless, if the ability to choose is mine, so too is the advantage. But what of the outside temptations? The most common way a host will make themselves eligible is via summoning other player phantoms. This is another advantage. By adding more players to their team, the host gains not only the additive strength of their brethren, but an exponential increase in effectiveness that comes with splitting targets and forcing a limited AI to make complex decisions constantly. It cannot be understated just how potent having multiple players fighting the same enemy can be. The enemy AI, no matter how sophisticated, cannot address the infinite combinations that become possible when multiple sentient players work in tandem. To very mildly counteract this advantage, phantoms are subject to a limitation. They have their number of recovery flasks halved, but that applies to all phantoms, including invaders. Invaders are, in fact, subject to all the same limitations as summoned phantoms with a few key differences. Summoned phantoms can be of any level relative to the host, assuming a password is used. If no password is used, then phantoms can be within 10 levels plus 10% of the host level up or down. Invaders, on the other hand, cannot enter via password. They are restricted to operating within the level limits. In the case of Elden Ring, invaders can invade a host down to 90% of their level, or up to 110% plus 20 levels above. Generally speaking, invaders will be lower level than the host, and possibly much lower level than the summoned phantoms. For the host, this is an advantage. Already, you can probably see a pattern forming and advantages are not limited solely to the benefits of additional players. Items play a key role. In Elden Ring, there is an item known as a Rune Arc. On their own, Rune Arcs grant a small health boost, but when combined with an equipped Great Rune, they gain additional benefits. These benefits range from additional stats, to a larger health boost, to potential health recovery options. Phantoms cannot benefit from Great Runes, with one exception. Invaders can use Moog's Great Ruin to gain a buff when triggering blood loss around chosen enemies. Taken all together, this is an extremely niche and unreliable advantage for invaders, and a much more consistent advantage for hosts. Piling on, hosts can make use of a passive item available as soon as they reach the round table hold. When an invader arrives in a host's world, the White Cipher Ring calls out to summon a hunter, another player who has opted into responding explicitly to counter invaders. This effect is automatic, requiring only that a player slot be available. Taking this even further, should an invader kill a phantom or hunter, the host can summon another to take their place. If the host or any of their allies manages to kill the invader, the match ends. Invaders do not get a second chance. And lastly, the host has the advantage of multiple win conditions. The host can win an invasion by killing the invader or by simply entering a boss fog. They can even forcibly disconnect the match, refuting the invasion entirely. The invader has only one win condition. Kill the host. So, up to this point, it might seem extremely obvious that hosts have all the advantages and the invaders have none. But let's take a closer look at what invaders have tilted in their favor. We said earlier that a host's ability to determine their eligibility for invasions was an advantage, and that's true. But the invader has an advantage in choosing when they invade. An eligible host has no idea when or if an invader will arrive, so they might be caught at an inopportune time that an at-the-ready invader could exploit. Invaders also have the advantage of every challenge the level already possesses. Enemies and obstacles in a level are built to oppose the host and provide invaders with a great degree of tactical opportunity. A patient invader can wait for the right time to strike, when their target is at their most vulnerable. Now, 
There is a great degree of nuance regarding these two advantages. The invader still does not know the conditions they enter prior to invading, and the opportunities presented by the level may be less than ideal. Take, for example, the idea of patient hosts. A host and their phantoms are progressing through a level, decimating enemies left and right, completely disrespecting any challenge they might have posed. Suddenly, a message appears alerting the team to an invader. They retreat. Rather than continue in the level, the host can make the decision to fall back to their nearest established safe point and wait out the invader, forcing them into an ambush without their supporting cast. This is an advantage. There is no clear incentive, beyond time spent, to continue in a level once an invader has appeared. The risk is amplified by an unknown factor, so any host that doesn't like the odds can change the scenario. This is not applicable to the invader, who has only a single win condition. If they fail to adequately oppose the host, they cannot win beyond hoping the level conquers them on its own, and that's hardly what I would consider a victory. Simply put, if the host runs, they win. If an invader runs, they lose. Now that we've covered some basics, I'd like to take a moment to focus on a common narrative regarding invasions. Invaders have a skill advantage. While I cannot validate this claim with any empirical data, I can say anecdotally that this is often, but not always, true. Invaders, in my experience, tend to be veterans, well-practiced in their craft. After all, invading is an entirely PvP game mode, so it only makes sense that they would be better prepared for it. But there is no guarantee that this will be the case. After all, invaders play through the game too. Whenever I am invaded, I utilize my years of PvP experience to give the invader as much of a fight as I can manage, and more often than not, I win. Assuming the invader is not of substantially higher skill or preparedness, my advantages as a host practically guarantee my success. Unless they came extra prepared. This is where game balance tends to rear its head. In Elden Ring, there are abilities via Ashes of War, or spells, or weapon combinations that blur or even outright circumvent the lines of skill. There are build possibilities that, when used against a player without prior knowledge, will kill with astounding consistency. Many AoE attacks or status proc effects come to mind. These tactics have become a staple of Elden Ring invasions, and frankly, I hate them, but I do acknowledge their place in the game. With so many advantages stacked against the invader, they are strongly incentivized to employ the most effective strategies they can muster. But if you have ever been invaded by someone using these tactics, you likely felt there was nothing you could have possibly done and that invaders are an impossible obstacle. This is incredibly damaging for the PvP community. Hosts who feel they have been essentially cheated out of a victory now feel victory is impossible because the game has allowed for such powerful tactics. I want to clarify that while I am not the sort of person to use these tactics, I do not blame invaders for resorting to them. Some do it out of what they feel is necessity, while others do it for the sheer pleasure of domination. These invaders, while responsible for their actions, are not the source of this problem, but rather the symptoms. Balance is the responsibility of the developers. And it is important to remember, invaders are not the only ones who have access to these tactics. Hosts and their phantoms can and do use all the same abilities as invaders to ensure their own victory. Whatever the most prepared invader can accomplish, a similarly prepared host and their phantoms can accomplish to an exponentially greater degree. Terrible, but great. Take, for example, a scenario of extreme preparedness, gank squads. An invader arrives expecting to find a host and one or two phantoms progressing through a level. Instead, they find three well-built, highly lethal players who have been expecting them. The best of invaders might relish this sort of challenge, but if we assume competency on the part of all parties in this situation, more often than not, the invader will die. Gank squads leverage every advantage they possess as the invaded party and turn it into near certain victory. There are, of course, exceptions. Some invaders are more than capable of dispatching a well-oiled gank machine, but this is the result of many, many hours of practice and appropriate preparedness. It should not be assumed every invader is prepared for the worst-case scenario, but the reality stands that a successful invasion is largely dependent on an over-prepared invader. With all of that said, I want to highlight the most extreme and reductive viewpoints of the debate. In the case of invaders having the advantage, Invaders are cheaters, griefers, twinks, and assholes. They have infinite items, abuse glitches and exploits, cheat in their equipment, and needlessly attack people for their own amusement. They are hostile psychopaths and literal terrorists. This game should not even have invasions, and anyone who would do it should be shot in the face. And in the case of hosts having the advantage. 
Hosts are gankers, cowards, taunters, and pussies who cannot stand on their own two feet. They need their overleveled friends to push them in a stroller through Limgrave so they can suck both thumbs while shitting their pants. Every host and their phantoms should be chained together and pushed into a volcano. Get good. So what can we learn from these viewpoints? Generally speaking, nothing. But if we come at it from a wizened perspective, we can glean insight. Invasions facilitate hostility, both manufactured and real. Whenever a player is made to lose or taken to task by another, it will invariably test that player's resolve. If it happens often enough, the player will reject the idea altogether as a defense mechanism, unable to cope with an untenable reality. This leads to the aforementioned viewpoints. But we are not here today to discuss motives of invasion or the disdain they might generate. We are here to answer a simple question. Who has the advantage? Objectively, the host. The host is set up to be given the most opportunities for success, and the invader must fight uphill against them. This shouldn't be news to anyone who has experience with both sides of the system, but I wanted to state it plainly. But on a much more interesting note, subjectively, the advantage belongs to the player who is best prepared, and that is the core of this topic. The thing that makes Elden Ring, and every Souls game, so interesting, what makes Invasion so enticing, is that preparedness can overcome any obstacle. No matter how bad the odds might be, you can win any encounter. There is no rock-paper-scissors dynamic, no one way to solve a problem, no right or wrong answer for every situation. You, as a player, are given an immense degree of freedom in how you solve these problems. To me, that is the very definition of good game design. Empowering players to solve their own problems. And invasions are the ultimate deployment of that design. Through invasions, Elden Ring has given everyone the opportunity to be Batman. With enough preparation, you can kill a god. The advantage is yours for the taking. Thank you for watching. I made this video largely in response to comments on my previous video with the hope that it might put some things in perspective. Please feel free to comment down below on other aspects of Elden Ring you'd like me to cover or any other topics you'd like to see discussed on the channel. I have a lot of strong opinions on a lot of very silly things, and I'm open to suggestions.